In this video presentation, I'm going to take just a few minutes and just show everybody how to do a DC promo to build a child domain in Active Directory. Now, in 2008 and 2008 R2, it's changed a little bit from back the way it was in 2003. In 2003, you used to have to kind of go through a little bit more of a process to get the whole configuration set up. Now, in 2008 and 2008 R2 especially, the process is very painless and very smooth and you can actually do this without really even knowing what you're doing which is kind of scary but let's go ahead and take a look at it so what we currently have is a parent domain which is itvideocoach.local and what we have in that parent domain right now is we have two domain controllers currently so we have a DC1 and a DC2 and what we're gonna do is take a server that's currently just a DC3 and we're gonna build a child domain out of this server so switching over to the desktop, let's go ahead and do the uh, check of the IP configuration. So let's take a look at the network card. And we can see that the network card has got an IP address of 10.10.10.103. We got a triple two five five mask and our gateway is 10.10.10.1. And we're pointing to our DNS server, which is 101. Now our DNS server is gonna be this guy right up here which is DC1 and DC1 has that IP address of 10.10.10.101 so we're actually going to point to him currently as we do the DC promo now when we install our domain controller we're going to actually switch back and point to our local DNS server when we're done and then we should see the uh, building of a delegation record between the parent and the child domain uh, to allow name resolution from the parent down and also a forwarder from the child up. So we're going to run DC promo. Now in 2008 and 2008 R2 and above the ADDS role is not installed. So when I type in DC promo instead of the Active Directory installation wizard just popping right up for you the first thing you're going to see is that it's installing the binary. So right now it's actually installing the Active Directory Domain Services binaries on your Windows Server 2008 R2 box. Once that's completed, then we're gonna see the pop-up window to install Active Directory and go through the Active Directory installation wizard. You also have the option to go to Server Manager and you can actually add the ADDS role first and then you don't have to sit there and watch those binaries go. But Either way you do it, it's going to take the same amount of time. We're going to go ahead and choose the advanced installation mode. And we're going to install into a existing forest. And we're going to create a brand new domain in an existing forest. And this server will become the first domain controller in the new domain. And we're going to create a new domain tree root instead of a new child domain. No, we're going to build a child domain. So we're going to pick this uh, middle-ish radio button right here. Now what we have to do is authenticate. So we're going to type in itvc.local. We'll go ahead and log in. And we're going to browse out to our parent domain. And we're going to name this domain child. Keep it real simple. And it just makes sure there is no duplicate name for child out there on the network and there is not so we can continue and we'll go ahead and raise the level up to 2008 R2 and we're going to be in the default first site name site now all these guys are going to be together in the same site initially by default which is fine and we're going to install DNS and I'm going to go ahead and make this uh, server a GC And we'll let the wizard choose the appropriate domain controller for the source domain controller. Capital P at sign SSW0RD. Capital P at sign SSW0RD. And this is the directory services restore mode. This is a different password than the administrator password. So you can actually have your one main administrative account, but actually have two different passwords. One's for directory services restore mode, and one's just for administrative uh, management control 
and it's going to do the DC promo and do a reboot when it's done. Like I said, it's, it's very, very simple. The key thing is to make sure that the environment that you have is already properly configured. So you've already got DNS installed up here. You've already got your zones built correctly. Everything's already set and ready to go. All you really got to do is make sure that on DC3 down here that you configure him to point to the parent, which is 10.10.10.101 for DNS, right? So that's his DNS pointer. As long as he's pointing to the parent for DNS, he'll be just fine. Now keep in mind his local IP address is 10.10.103. With a slash 24, and he's pointing to a gateway of 10.10.10.1 for now. That's his gateway. So he's properly IP'd, he's got the right IP address, and we just got to make sure that he's pointing to the right DNS server. So if that parent DNS server and AD is configured correctly, for the most part, it's going to go off and do everything on its own without a whole lot of interaction required. After the DC promo is completed, we reboot, we come back up, we can see that we have the domain available. And we can log in. Once the uh, DC promo is completed, you reboot and you log back in to get to your desktop. And we can take a look around. We can see that we have our Active Directory. And we can see that we have child, itvc.local. So our domain was built correctly. And let's take a look at our DNS. Probably the main concern you're going to have after your DC promo of your child domain is to make sure that you have a properly configured DNS. So let's open up our DNS. Let's see if we have a zone, which we do. And let's see if we have a forwarder that points up to our parent domain. And we do have a forwarder. Now that forwarder is built automatically. You no longer have to build the forwarder. Now what we're going to do is switch over to the parent domain and we're going to look at the DNS on the parent domain and let's see if it built the delegation record for us. And we can see that we have child and there's our delegation record and the delegation record was also built for us automatically. Now back in Windows 2003, you'd have to go through quite a few steps to get the server properly configured, to get DNS installed, get it to change to point to itself, and now all that stuff was done automatically for you. Now if we switch back over to DC3, and we go take a look at our TCP IP settings. Now before we started the DC promo, this network card was configured to point to the parent for DNS. Let's see if that made a change after the DC promo completed. So let's take a look and see what we have. Go to our network card and go to properties. And let's take a look and see if our IP changed. And the DNS is now pointing to himself. And we have an alternate as 101 as a backup. So if we take a look at this, we can actually say that the DNS has changed. Let's erase that right there. So after the DC promo is over, it does automatically change this. Actually, let me just totally get rid of this because it put in the loopback adapter, which is actually the better configuration. It's the correct technical configuration. It's a little bit better. It's a little bit faster. Don't have to worry about the IP address and the card changing. And this is going to be 127.0.0.1. And we can actually see that we're configured to point to ourselves. So we're pointing to ourselves is what we want. We want that server to point to himself. He's a domain controller. He has DNS installed. We have our Active Directory domain. That looks really good. And then we have our DNS. We have our zone for child. Uh, one thing that should always be noted after initial DC promo, it never creates a reverse lookup zone for you. You always have to build your own reverse lookup zone. So you might want to consider building that reverse lookup zone when it's over. And then the important two things are, is that it's got a forwarder to point up automatically. Let me just draw this in this visual here. So we have a forwarder that points up. And what the forwarder means, anytime there's a child client, if there's any computer in the child domain that needs to resolve a name in the parent, so if I'm sitting at this Windows 7 machine and I need to resolve the name of whatever it might be, xp1.itvc.local, even though I'm sitting in the child domain, this forwarder 
that's built for me down here in the child will automatically send me to that parent domain to resolve that name. From the parent domain's perspective, this delegation record says anytime anybody in the parent is looking for something in the child, go to DC3. And he's the DNS server down there that can resolve that for you. So from the opposite point of view, the delegation record is created and allows anybody in the parent. So let's say that I got a Windows 7 machine and the parent is trying to resolve the name of XP 4.child.itvc.local that delegation record will refer me to the DNS server down in the child. So there's a very easy way to remember that we delegate down and we forward up. And it's important to know that configuration because if for some reason after the DC promo is completed, something's not set up quite right, you know, you can definitely verify your configuration and make sure it's the way you want. So we delegate down and we forward up, delegate down, forward up, and your DC promo is done. Other than creating the uh, reverse lookup zones, if you choose to, you're good to go. You got yourself a child domain. We'll see you in the next video.